Today we're going to discuss velocity and speed. These two quantities are very similar to one another, but they do have some distinct differences that allows them to be classified as different quantities. However, sometimes they will be the same value when we talk about how are they different though overall. Here's a little Venn diagram that describes speed and velocity and has some things that are different about them and some things that are the same. Speed is defined as distance over time. So whenever you find the total distance that an object travels, you divide that by the total time it took, and that will give you the object's distance. Speed is a scalar quantity. Okay, remember from the last video that scalar quantities are not dependent upon the direction. Okay, so speed, you just take the total distance, which you should have remembered how or how to determine that, and divide that by the total time, which will give you the speed. Okay? Velocity, on the other hand, is displacement over time. So you should remember how displacement and distance differ. Remember, it's just the straight line distance from the starting point to the ending point. Direction does matter for displacement. Therefore, it is a vector quantity. Okay? And if displacement is a vector quantity, therefore velocity will be a vector quantity. What's similar about the two is that they are both rates of change. Remember, a rate is anything that's divided by time. So in this case, speed is the rate of change of distance. And displacement, or velocity, is the rate of change of displacement. Our units for both of them, for the numerical value, will be distance over time. Okay, so kilometers per hour, meters per second, miles per hour. Okay, those are all examples of units for speed and velocity. We have two different types of velocities or speeds. I'm talking about the numerical value here. We have an average velocity, we have instantaneous velocity. Average velocity is found by the equation we saw before. V equals displacement, which we talked about before, would be called delta x divided by time. You can find this average velocity while an object is accelerating or not accelerating. This equation also holds true for constant velocities. And if you have a constant velocity, then acceleration equals zero. Okay, that equation will hold true for an average or constant velocity. An instantaneous velocity is one that is found by looking at a speedometer. Okay, so this is what the speedometer says. When you're going down the road and the, look at the speed limit, that's not your average speed limit, that's your instantaneous speed limit. Okay, when the police officer puts that radar gun on your car, he's looking for the instantaneous speed, not the average speed. Okay, most of the time, your average velocity will be lower than any of your instantaneous velocity, or the, any of your highest instantaneous velocities, because that will be including any time that you stop as you drive as well. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's look at a quick example here. Atlanta and Macon are located 137 kilometers apart. If one car leaves Atlanta traveling at 80 kilometers per hour and another leaves Macon traveling at 100 kilometers per hour, how long and how far will the first car travel until it meets the second? So let's think about what we're given here. What we're trying to solve for and see if we can figure out a relationship between these variables. So let's make a data table here. Let's list out what we know, what we don't know. So the first thing I'm going to look at is car one. Okay, so car one, we know it's going to have a velocity of 80 kilometers per hour. I'm just going to call car one the one that's listed first. Car 2, the one that's listed second, has a velocity of 100 kilometers per hour. I'm going to use a little subscript 2 there to represent car 2. All right, they don't say anything about acceleration, so we're going to assume that these velocities are constant. 
When we have constant velocities, we only have one equation that we know, and this is going to be something that you're going to see over and over again. And that's that V equals delta X over T. Okay, so in this case, we'll say V1 equals delta X1 over T. And we'll say that V2 equals delta X2 over T. Okay, our unknowns are both delta X1 and delta X2 and the time. Why did I not specify T1 and T2? Well, if cars are going to be meeting one another, those times will be the same. So we don't have to define T1 or T2. We can just call them T. The next thing we need to look for is some relationship between our other unknowns. So we don't know what delta X1 is. We don't know what delta X2 is. So right now we have two equations with three unknowns. Our three unknowns are delta X1, delta x2, and our times. We know that from, we know from math that when you're trying to solve a system of equations, you need to have the number of equations for a number of unknowns. So we need to make a relationship between two of our variables to get rid of one of our unknowns. And the one that you're going to be looking for is the fact that these are located 137 kilometers apart. So what do you know about delta x1 and delta x2? Exactly, they're going to add up to be 137 kilometers. So delta x1 plus delta x2 is 137 kilometers. So now we can solve that relationship for one of our two variables. Okay, we can solve it for delta x1 or we can solve it for delta x2. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're going to say that, let's just say delta x1 equals 137 kilometers minus delta x2. Okay, so now we have this relationship. We've solved for one of our variables. So that's one way we could do it. We could then solve these equations down here for the time and set them equal to each other. Or we could plug, solve these for delta x1 and delta x2 and then substitute them into this equation. So however you want to do it at this point is fine. I'm going to solve for delta x1 and delta x2 in our two equations that we wrote out first. And then I'm going to plug them into that relationship above. So I'm going to solve this down here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by t. And I'll get that delta x1 equals v1 times t. I'm going to do the same thing over here, times t, times t, I get delta x2 equals v2 times t. I'm going to go ahead and slide this up so I have a little bit more room to work with. Okay, so now I can plug in these relationships to this equation above. I can plug in for delta x2 and plug in for delta x1. What that allows us to do now is to get rid of one of our unknowns. So now, instead of having both delta x1 and delta x2, we have t in those places. Because we know v2, it's 100 kilometers per hour, and we know that v1 is 80 kilometers per hour. So we're going to plug in to this equation here. I'm going to write it down here at the bottom so we have a little bit more room to work with. So I'm going to say v1 times t equals 137 kilometers minus V2 times T. V1 was 80. I'm going to say 80 kilometers per hour times T equals 137 kilometers minus 100 kilometers per hour times T. So I'm going to do some algebra. and I'm going to add 100 kilometers per hour times T to both sides. So let's cancel out on our right hand side. Our left hand side, in our new equation that we write, we'll have 180 kilometers per hour times t equals 137 kilometers. 
So now we want to divide both sides by 180 kilometers per hour. And that's not a nice round number, so we'll plug it in our calculator. And we're going to get some decimal value. So we'll say 137 divided by 180, which gives us 0 0.761 hours. And if you want to convert that to minutes, you can just multiply it times 60. If not, you can leave it the way that it is. Now we want to know the distance that car 1 will travel. So we can plug that back in, and now we're going to be solving for delta x1. So I'm going to slide this up a little bit further again. We see our time. And delta x1, if you remember, oops, delta x1 just equals v1 times t. So now we can say delta x1 equals that 80 kilometers per hour times 0.761 hours. And we'll plug that in our calculator again. And we'll see that car 1 will travel a distance of, or a displacement. Okay, in this case, they're both going to be the same because the objects are not accelerating. When the objects are not accelerating, their speed and their velocity will be the same value. So if we plug that in, we'll get that the object will travel 60.9 kilometers. All right, pretty straightforward stuff with speed and velocity. You're not doing a whole lot of different calculations. should be pretty easy to look at some of these pro uh, sample problems and work on these tonight. Uh, hopefully this will help you on your as the crow flies problem as well. And we'll pick up next time.